Can we have the Cabinet Secretary's microphone, please? Thank you. Presiding officer, I'd like to begin um, with a reminder of why we're discussing these matters today. The world's ecosystems are rapidly degrading. This is not a remote or an abstract problem. It's real, it's happening now, and we cannot continue to ignore what is in front of us. The marine heat wave declared in the North Sea last week, which has been labelled extreme by scientists, this clearly shows the impacts of the global climate emergency are already being felt here on our shores. It's more clear than ever that we are in the midst of a nature and climate crisis. We must be prepared to take action commensurate with the scale of that challenge. But at the same time, we must do so via a fair and just transition, which empowers our people. Presiding officer, I want to be clear why this government believes change is required. The latest assessment under the UK Marine Strategy indicated that overall we have failed to achieve 11 out of the 15 indicators of good environmental status in our seas. Evidence presented in Scotland's 2020 marine assessment shows an accelerating rate of change due to human activities. Nine out of 21 marine regions in Scotland have seafloor habitats which are predicted to be in poor condition across more than half of their area. Seabirds are also in trouble with populations of surface feeding seabirds such as the Kittywalk in decline. So failure to safeguard and improve the resilience of Scotland's marine ecosystems to changing climate risks it risks the very basis on which our marine industries and coastal communities are built. The case for enhanced marine protection, therefore, is clear and one which all parties in the Chamber agree on, or at least they did at election time. We know that where we protect our marine ecosystems, we protect and we sustain the ecosystem services that livelihoods and communities rely on. And that outcome is something that I hope we can all agree. That's why... We are committed to working with coastal communities, with fishers, aquaculture, tourism and all affected sectors to enhance marine protection in Scotland for the benefit of all. There has, um, understandably, been considerable debate around highly protected marine areas and I should like to thank all members, stakeholders and members of the public who have contributed uh, so robustly to the early part of this debate. My thanks also uh, for the many constructive conversations that I've had with MSPs from across the Chamber in recent weeks, as well as with fishing representatives, local authorities, youth representatives and environmental campaigners. That includes my colleagues in the Scottish Greens. Highly protected marine areas are part of our Butte House Agreement, and I very much welcome the constructive engagement that I've had with the Green Group as we've developed our thinking on this critical issue. I have listened intently and I'm in no doubt of the strong views both for and against. But if there is one consistent point of consensus, it's that doing nothing is not an option. In fact, we know from a recent government-funded study that 85% of Scottish respondents consider that protecting the marine environment is important to them. So I want to emphasise that I recognise the scale of what highly protected marine areas represent. We are at the drawing board on this issue, presiding officer, and I have, from the very beginning of the process, invited Scotland's communities to the drawing board with us. It's why I was keen that we consulted so broadly and so early uh, in the process as possible with no predetermined ideas about sites. We're currently analysing the thousands of responses uh, to that consultation, and I will, of course, give due consideration to those. A full response to the consultation and the next steps will be published after summer recess. However, I committed in this chamber to updating the Parliament on the matter as soon as I possibly could. So ahead of a fuller update after summer, I should like to share an initial, an initial one today. Now, a particular concern that has been raised with me, presiding officer, uh, notably by both those who support HPMA and those who don't, is the impl implementation of the proposal in the proposed time frame could risk limiting our aspirations for genuine collaboration with communities, which to me, to this government, is absolutely integral to Scotland's approach to a fair and a just transition. Therefore, while for reasons that I've stated, we firmly remain committed to the outcome of enhancing marine protection, I can confirm today that the proposal as consulted on will not be progressed. This means we will no longer seek to implement HPMAs across 10% of Scotland's seas by 2026. Over the summer, 
as part of ongoing dialogue with all of those who have an interest in Scotland's seas and protecting them, we will develop a new pathway and a timetable for our work. This will be in line with our draft biodiversity strategy and its ambition for Scotland to be nature positive by 2030. And it recognises that the EU has proposed marine protection in at least 10%, sorry, enhanced marine protection in at least 10% of its seas by 2030. Importantly, I will ensure that communities across Scotland are central to this process. We know that there are uh, a plethora of innovative ideas of how we can improve protection, and this is exactly what I want to hear more of, including from those such as inshore fishermen, who recognise the importance of this to their livelihoods. It's very important to me that those affected by policies are engaged in their development. The viability of coastal and island communities matters greatly to this government. So too do matters of cultural importance that have come to the fore of this debate. As I have said a number of times, our seas must remain a source of economic and social prosperity for our nation. So I speak directly to everyone in our coastal and island communities, including those who have expressed concerns to date, when I say that I want you to help shape the future of Scotland's seas. As I and indeed the First Minister have said many times, communities must be meaningfully involved. And today, I'm making clear that that will happen. In that regard, and, and on an immediate and ongoing basis, the government does remain committed to support any group that wishes to pursue community-led marine protection in their local areas. We have already seen successful initiatives in Arran and in St Abbs and Eyemouth. Mm -hmm. I will do everything I can in this session of Parliament to support those communities who want to follow their shining examples, examples that we know can work to improve the state of the local marine environment. And while I have confirmed today that the HBMA policy as consulted upon will not be taken forward, investing in ocean health requires a range of interventions across all of our seas that we must continue to take forward as a matter of urgency. Scotland's existing marine protected area network covers approximately 37% of our seas, but individual sites must be effectively managed to achieve their objectives. And we must also do more to safeguard our particularly vulnerable species and habitats. We have an ongoing programme of work to implement fisheries management measures in existing MPAs where they are yet to be introduced and to protect some of the most vulnerable priority marine features outside of the MPA network. These measures were delayed by Brexit, by the COVID-19 pandemic. However, we're committed to putting them in place as soon as possible following due process. And I welcome the fishing industry's support in moving this forward. And I can confirm that after summer recess, we'll consult on proposals for fisheries management measures in offshore MPAs beyond 12 nautical miles. The options to be consulted upon have been the subject of extensive engagement and over many years with all stakeholders. Inshore MPAs and priority marine features also require fisheries management measures. However, the complexity of the inshore and the number of sites has meant that progress has been slower than hoped. Therefore, consultation on inshore measures will take place in 2024. My colleague Mary Goujon intends to consult this summer on the potential closure of sand eel fisheries in Scottish waters. This is a crucial step in safeguarding an important food source for many species and could aid the long-term sustainability and resilience of marine ecosystems. All of that vital work, presiding officer, on marine protection, it must and it will proceed with pace. And of course it does so as this government continues to support Scotland's fishing industry, not least through the £14 million Marine Fund Scotland, which the Rural Affairs Secretary, Mary Goujon, recently launched the third round of. And I want to take the opportunity to thank all of the stakeholders with whom Mary and I work across all these matters. Presiding officer, I began this statement by outlining our commitment to addressing the twin crises of climate change and nature loss. Our blue economy vision recognises that our economy and society are embedded with nature. They are not external to it. It looks to move us beyond traditional narratives of choosing between ocean protection and production, recognising that the latter cannot be achieved without the former. I'll be publishing more on next steps after the summer, and of course we'll keep Parliament up to date. But I hope that, I have, that what I've stated today demonstrates that I'm listening and I will continue to listen. There's been a lot of heat in the debate about HPMAs, and I hope that my commitment to develop a new pathway with all those who will join me around the table will allow a great deal less heat and more light in the matter. Because, presiding officer, I'm clear that both enhanced marine protection and a whole uh, community approach is required. Um, presiding officer, I said in my foreword to the recent HPMA consultation that, and I quote, I'm determined that those who may be affected by these proposals are involved from the outset. That's why I want to hear what you think. 
I went on to say, I want to take on board your concerns and your ideas. Presiding officer, while I continue my meetings across Scotland over the summer, and as my officials and I finalise analysis of the consultation responses, I trust it's clear that I'm listening and that I will continue to listen as we take forward what is the imperative of marine protection. Thank you. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in her statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes for questions, after which we'll move on to the next item of business. I'd be grateful if all members who wish to put a question were to press their request to speak buttons. And I call Rachel Hamilton. Thank you, Presiding Officer. <clears throat> Over the last few months, my Scottish Conservative colleagues and I have been engaging extensively with fishermen and the industry representatives across the length and the breadth of Scotland's coastal communities to hear their concerns. And never before in my role as rural spokesperson for my party have I come across a policy that is so universally opposed by an industry and by communities that industry supports. Today's statement has abjectly failed to address the concerns of our in industry. Instead of listening to fishing communities, they are rehashing their plans on what the EU tells them to do. Instead of backing down, this government is doubling down on its plans to ban fishing in almost 50% of Scottish waters. Same policy, new date, Butte House fudge. Cabinet Secretary, when will the Scottish Government finally listen to the concerns of the people they are supposed to serve and drop these community wrecking plans. Cabinet Secretary. Um, Presiding officer, I think, and I will leave it up to Rachel Hamilton, but I suspect she's going to have to correct the record at some point on some of the assertions that she has just yeah. made. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's also deeply I ironic and really disappointing, actually, that she's resorting to what is politicking. And it, and it is ironic because, as I've said a number of times now, her party, she stood on a manifesto with a commitment to highly protected marine areas. Her colleagues in the UK government are taking forward highly protected marine areas in England. And at Therese Coffey, the Environment Secretary, described highly protected marine areas as a vital way forward. Now, I have been very clear from the beginning that this government believes and is utterly convinced that we must take forward enhanced marine protection in Scotland's waters, but equally we are committed to doing so via a process which communities can have faith in and which represents fairness and justice, and that's exactly what we will continue to take forward. Thank you. I'll, before I move to Ms Grant, can I ask that um, comments are, the temptation to make comments that can be audible are resisted. Rhoda Grant. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I welcome this statement and I hope it is a genuine change of heart and a signal of a very different working relationship with our fishing communities. The people whose lives depend on our seas are ideally placed to make policy that protects our marine environment. Can I ask what this new engagement will look like and how it will include all those affected by changes? Can she also assure me that any changes to the management of existing marine protected areas will be carried out after full consultation with coastal communities? And will she also assure the Chamber that this is not simply HPMAs by the back door? And finally, can I ask, if communities want to instigate areas of protection, how do they do that, given the process has taken decades in the past? Cabinet Secretary. Um, Presiding Officer, Rhoda Grant mentioned um, the relationship between the Scottish Government and the fishing industry. And what I would say is that um, please do not be under any misapprehension that we have engaged on this issue in absence of others. Marie Goujon and I, our officials, we have a strong relationship with Scotland's fishing industry. We uh, engage with them on a range of matters. We have been engaging with them on marine protection for a number of years. And I refer to that in my statement as regards to the MPA process. Um, and I thank them for that. And I thank Scotland's marine lobby uh, equally. Um, like I'm not going to preempt the outcome of the conversations that I'm continuing to have uh, over the summer, um, nor am I going to preempt the outcome of uh, finalised consultation responses. I remain open-minded to what this new approach to community engagement will look like. But if Rhoda Grant has ideas on how she thinks that can best be done, I would welcome them, as I would from others across the chamber. Alistair Allen to be followed by Finlay Carson. 
The news that the Government will not be seeking to progress the HPMA proposals represents a very welcome change of tack, which will be greeted with relief along the West Coast. Fishers have more at stake than anyone in ensuring that our seas are sustainable. So what can the Government now do to ensure that fishing communities are at the heart of future fishing policy? Cabinet Secretary. Um, Presiding Officer, Dr Allen is absolutely right. Our marine sectors, uh, including the fishing industry across the whole of the country, they depend on a healthy marine environment. And of course, fishers understand how important this is and they must have their say. Um, I want the voices from coastal and island communities to, to shape their own future for their benefit. So I do, as I've mentioned, intend to establish a dialogue on the benefits of enhancing marine protection that allows that to happen. Um, it must be a democratic process and it must, I think, reflect the scale of the ambition of protecting Scotland seas in the way that the nature crisis demands of us. And I just want to take the opportunity to thank uh, Dr Allen for his engagement with me on this issue, including um, his setting up of a very helpful meeting between uh, me, him and the Western Isle, uh, representatives of Western Isles Council. Finley Carson to be followed by Kenneth Gibson. Uh, President officer, I was minded to welcome the apparent scrapping of HPMAs, but this statement is no more than a last-minute effort to pacify the rebels in our backbenches as they head off on their summer holidays, because this statement still continues to mention the unresearched arbitrary 10 per cent target. But will the Minister apologise to her fishers and coastal communities for the worry and the distress she has caused them over the last few months? And will she join me in condemning the Green MSP Ross Greer and his ridiculous attack on the Scottish Fishermen's Federation and Salmon Scotland, or is his voice, the true voice of the Green SNP Unholy Alliance and their misguided policies, which only outcome would be their, only, their own version of the rural islands and highland clearances? Cabinet Secretary. <laughs> Pres Presiding Officer, I have always, and I hope that my conduct and my contributions on this matter in the Chamber have demonstrated how seriously I take this yeah. matter. I understand both the absolute imperative of enhancing the protection of our oceans, but equally doing so in a way that is acceptable to and works for and benefits yes. the people who live in our coastal and island communities throughout Scotland. I take that exceptionally seriously. And just, you know, regardless of politicking from the Conservatives, I will mm -hmm. continue to do that. And th th this goes to the, the core of the issue. We are in an emergency situation with the climate uh, and nature degradation. And as the, uh, Antonio Guterres, the UN Secretary General, says, what that requires of us is everything, everywhere, all at once. And that is the challenge that we as a government have uh, in Scotland. Um, I'm dedicated to doing that, but I'm also dedicated to fairness. And I hope that what I've set out today uh, makes that clear. Kenneth Gibson to be followed by Mercedes Vial. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And it's disappointing that for some members no compromise on this issue appears to be acceptable. Enhancing marine protection will safeguard invaluable marine habitats and key fish stocks, specifically by curtailing the most destructive human activities such as scallop dredging and bottom trawling. What steps will the Cabinet Secretary take to engage with communities who wish to strengthen marine biodiversity, emulate the success of Lamlash Bay no-take zone in my constituency, and provide further protection for Scotland's inshore waters? And over what timescale will this take place? Cabinet Secretary. Um, Secretary officer, I thank uh, Kenneth Gibson for his question and also um, while there has been a very robust support from him for uh, proposals for enhanced marine protection, and I will continue to liaise with him on his views on the matter. Of course, he represents an area in which we have an excellent example within Scotland of what community-led uh, marine protection can look like. The Lamlash Bay no-take zone uh, shows us the benefits that can be had for both the marine environment and for the people who rely on it. I was very pleased to visit Coast recently and to help launch their new explorer vessel. Um, they are that true example of environmental protection and uh, community empowerment, and it's something, their example, is something that I will take into the next stages of developing uh, this process. As with my response to Rhoda Grant, I can't preempt the outcome of my consultation analysis or indeed the conversations that I'm keeping having over summer. Um, but I will, as I have done today, seek to update Parliament as soon as I can on the pathway forward. Mercedes Vialba to be followed by Emma Harper. The status quo in Scotland's waters is not working. Last week, the Court of Session ruled that ministers unlawfully ignored the National Marine Plan when deciding on fishing licence policies. And after today's statement, it's clear that we're still no closer 
to a coherent marine spatial planning process. In the meantime, our waters and everyone and everything that rely on them are being squeezed. So can the Minister confirm whether the Scottish Government is committed to creating a cohesive spatial plan for our seas in this term of the Parliament? Cabinet Secretary. Um, Presiding officer, there does appear to be a, a real conflict in the Scottish Labour position here, whereby Mercedes Villalba seems to reflect and remember the manifesto that she stood on that committed not to 10% HPMA as we've consulted upon, but on double that. Whereas a colleague sitting uh, right, to her, right to her left, on her left, uh, seems to have forgotten that entirely. Um, I mentioned in my statement the suite of other um, actions that we will continue to take forward, not least management measures within the MPA network, not least protection of um, priority marine features and our work on sand deal fishery. So I actually hope that some of the space that this statement will create in the marine protection areas will allow us to progress those matters. She mentioned the shared space and the, the need to uh, manage that. We are about to, or we have begun in the very early days of the next national marine plan and I would expect some of those matters of shared space and how best to do that will feature heavily in the development of that plan. Emma Harper to be followed by Liam MacArthur. I welcome this announcement which will certainly alleviate Galloway fishers' concerns and which will be welcomed by fishing communities across the Friesen Galloway. As the Scottish Government continues its plans to enhance marine protections for the environment, can the Cabinet Secretary reiterate how the voices of fishers such as those in Galloway are at the centre of these discussions and can she confirm that she will meet with the Galloway fishers at her earliest opportunity so that their voices can be heard from the outset of any future proposals? Cabinet Secretary. Um, presiding officer, the, the, the genesis of what I'm saying today is that I intend to take the time to gather views uh, from people right across Scotland about how we improve the state of our marine environment uh, in a way that ensures that we rise to what's required of us by way of conservation, but equally in a way that serves uh, Scotland's people. Um, I know that there are innovative ideas out there about how we do that, and it's exactly what I want to hear more of, uh, including from those who Emma Harper represents. I'm just finalising the meetings that I'm seeking to take forward over the summer, and I will certainly uh, consider her approach regarding the Galloway Fisher people. Liam MacArthur to be followed by Ruth McGuire. Uh, thank you. Uh, like Alistair Allen, can I warmly welcome uh, the Government's retreat from the arbitrary approach to HPMAs, which have caused real alarm in the island communities we represent. Of course, fishers recognise the importance of marine uh, protection, but given that less than 10 per cent of the existing MPA network has been monitored over the last five years. How does the Cabinet Secretary um, plan to resource the monitoring and management uh, of MPAs? And can she say more about the way in which the engagement uh, with island and coastal communities going forward will, will take place? Cabinet Secretary. Um, Presiding officer, I would just uh, thank Liam MacArthur for his question, although I would have to um, give my view that 10 per cent is not an arbitrary figure. 10% mirrors um, the level of strict protection which the EU is currently seeking to develop. Um, and I think uh, individually, although I'll correct this if I'm wrong, I think France, Germany and Denmark are equally looking at uh, strict protection of 10%. Of but look, I understand and I think I tried to set out in my statement that it was the coincidence of an ambitious 10% within the time frame that both those who opposed HPMAs and those who supported HPMAs were telling me that they, th they worried, limited the opportunity for uh, the robust community engagement that, that I certainly want to see, and of course they do as well. Um, so that's exact that and other questions about moving forward with the MPA network, as he says, is exactly what I'm taking into uh, a dialogue over the summer, and we'll update Parliament on the fuller details of that once I have decided on the way forward. Ruth McGuire to be followed by Ariane Burgess. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Last week, I met with my constituent, Willie Kennedy, who is chair of the Scottish Sea Angling Conservation Network. He painted a pretty distressing picture of the decline of our inshore waters of the Clyde due to destructive trawling since the removal of the three-mile limit in 1984 and spoke to the desire of his organisation for robust protection measures and a just transition for the Clyde fleet. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary how enhanced marine protection can support the recovery of the Clyde seabed and the protection and promotion of the interests of our local communities, sea anglers and the low-impact commercial fishing sector? Cabinet Secretary. Um, I thank Ruth McGuire for her question. And whilst I 
might be hearing cries of nonsense from the Tory benches. In fact, it's scientific evidence yeah. uh, from temperate locations around the world which suggests that enhanced marine protection delivers that greater science. conservation Cabinet benefit. Secretary, if you could give me a moment. Yes. Uh, Mr Carson, I can hear you rather too clearly, and I'd be grateful if you could uh, allow the Cabinet Secretary to respond. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I was going to briefly go on to say that it can lead to wider, a ra wider range of seafloor species, larger populations, uh, and increased resilience to disturbance. And we have studies which show this from around the world, including in California and in New Zealand, and in particular the benefits of spillover from highly protected areas, where, of course, uh, greater species abundance in, in and around highly protected marine areas is quite clearly advantageous to those who make their living from uh, the seas. And I've mentioned studies such as uh, Lamlash Bay, um, but they have shown that you know, those commercially important species such as the king scallop and the lobster are more numerous, they are older, and they are larger following protection. So if I can have one message from today's update, it is that um, the, the, the position, as was consulted on, is now no longer being progressed, but this government goes into our conversation about the process with uh, a very clear principle that enhanced marine protection is required and will be implemented. Ariane Burgess to be followed by Edward Mountain. I welcome the constructive approach being taken to protecting our marine environment and fish stocks for current and future generations. The new time frame will allow genuine partnership working with communities to deliver enhanced protection and help us align with the EU. In the meantime, community-led marine reserves, as we've been hearing already today, like Lamlash Bay, could lead the way. What will the Cabinet Secretary do to encourage more coastal communities to come forward and ensure that all voices are heard, such as those working in tourism, conservation and young people, as well as all parts of the fishing industry. Cabinet Secretary. Um, President Officer, I thank Ariane Burgess for her question and indeed her engagement with me on uh, the matter. I, I think that she's touched on a point about how willing communities feel uh, able to come forward. I said that I thought there had been more heat than light in this debate. I think that there has been. There's a toxicity uh, which has surrounded it and I hope that today I'm creating the breathing space for us all to come back around the table everybody who's interested to come back around the table and to um, find a way forward. And uh, my point regarding encouraging communities to come forward is that I do think, amid the toxicity, there was a reluctance amongst those who probably supported uh, HPMAs or would like to see one in their communities. They maybe didn't feel that they could come forward. So I want to take the heat out of this debate. I want to involve everybody with an interest and I will encourage uh, and support any community that wants to follow the lamb lash example and seek to develop this uh, locally. Edward Mountain to be followed by Karen Adam. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And I'd like to remind the Chamber of my register of interest that I am a joint proprietor of an inshore fishery for migratory fish. Um, this statement today is partly, partially about protection. It's also a huge about, amount about deflection, political deflection, because only this morning I was told and reminded that this HPMA process has created confusion and anger across all coastal communities, a lack of transparency and accountability, which featured as part of the recent Court of Session ruling on inshore fisheries and fishing licences. My question to the Cabinet Secretary is simple. The REC Committee in 2018, Recommendation 53, recommended moving salmon farms from inshore areas to out uh, further out to sea to ensure that they uh, did less damage to the coast. Will she ensure that that is part of the process and she doesn't forget that when she's taking this process forward? Cabinet Secretary. Um, Presiding Officer, uh, political deflection is all we get from the Conservatives, uh, I'm afraid. Um, but to, to come on to the, the point that Edward Mountain uh, raises, firstly, um, the Cabinet Secretary for Rural Affairs and I are taking forward work on some of the points he raises and the, the aquaculture generally through our Scottish Aquaculture Council, um, which is proving to be an excellent forum to um, discuss and to exchange many ideas uh, and proposals around uh, the sustainable future of aquaculture for Scotland. We'll continue to do that. And equally, 
This is a process that I want to bring everyone round the table on. That includes Edward Mountain. It include, includes uh, MSPs from across the chamber. So if he does have ideas about changes to the aquaculture industry in Scotland, he is always welcome to bring them to me, to Mary Goujon, or indeed to be part of the, the dialogue on the future of HMPAs. Karen Adam to be followed by Jamie Halker Johnston. Thank you, President Officer. And I'd like to thank the Cabinet Secretary for her constructive dialogue that we have had and for taking the time to listen to the concerns of the coastal communities and the fishers which I represent. Fishers are well aware of the need to safeguard the health of our seas because not just, just do they rely on that for their livelihoods, but also our food security. They bring intergenerational knowledge and experience to the table. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary how fishers will be able to feed this wealth of knowledge into any future discussions on enhancing marine protections as we continue to protect our marine environment along with our world-renowned vital food source? Cabinet Secretary. Um, Presiding Officer, I thank Karen Adam for the question. Co-management is at the heart of how we manage fisheries in Scotland um, and it will be, as I hope I've made clear today, uh, part of how we take forward uh, a pathway on enhanced marine uh, protection. Um, equally, um, the fishermen can feed into discussions through established forums on the generality of, of marine matters in Scotland, including through uh, the Fisheries Management and Conservation Group. Um, I mentioned previously in a, in a previous answer that the, the Cabinet Secretary for Rural Affairs and I uh, and our officials, we work with the fishing industry regularly. The Scottish Government has done so for years uh, on quota, uh, on financial support, indeed emotional support in difficult times, and on marine protection through the MPA network. And interestingly, one of the things that's been raised with me in this process is that there is a great deal of faith in the MPA process and the, the means by which management measures are taken forward through that. So we are ever learning. Uh, this is an iterative process. Uh, that's, what, uh, that's what we're facing as we try to live up to what the climate and nature emergency demands of us. And Jamie Helker Johnston. In claiming to take her plans back to the drawing board, the Cabinet Secretary now says there will be dialogue with marine stakeholders and that communities will be central to that process. Presiding officer, I'm at a loss to know why that wasn't the approach from the very start of this. But the Cabinet Secretary said that HPMAs was part of the Butte House Agreement, and so will she be honest with this chamber? Is this a genuine U-turn from the Scottish Government, albeit one forced by anger in local communities, opposition from across this chamber, and the threat of rebellion in the SNP backbenches? Well, given the Greens seem to be happy with this new approach, is this just a sleight of hand, and Scotland's coastal communities and our fishing communities still have a lot to be worried about, about this SNP Green Government's intentions? Cabinet Secretary. Presiding officer, this is not as is characterised uh, by Jamie Halcrow Johnson because I have been clear from the start that I always understood the ambition that was represented in our proposals. That's why the government was clear from the beginning that we wanted to hear views, we wanted to have Scotland's communities, industry, local authorities help us shape the process by which we deliver. Uh, enhanced marine protection. And I'm glad that Jamie Halker Johnson has given me the opportunity to demonstrate just how much engagement has already been part of the development of this process. Uh, not least that early and broad uh, consultation, but we held some 20 meetings with stakeholders. Cabinet in Secretary, Mr Halker Johnston, you have put your question. I'd be grateful if the Cabinet Secretary could respond. Thanks, uh, Presiding Officer. Some 20 uh, meetings with key stakeholders in advance of consult uh, consulting to take their views on what could be involved. We held meetings during the consultation, uh, principally to assist anybody who wanted to complete it to, to do so. Since closing, I have discussed matters in Troon with fishing representatives. I have discussed matters with the Western Isles Council uh, representatives. I've met the community of coast uh, in Arran. I've spoken with the Scottish Fishermen's Federation. I have met with Environment Link. And I've met with representatives of the Sustainable Inshore Fisheries Trust. I will continue to engage with the spectrum of interests in this matter as we deliver the imperative of marine protection. Thank you. That concludes the ministerial statement. There will be a brief pause before we move to the next item of business.